I walk into my dad's office one day when we were working together at the insurance agency. I was the owner, I think I was in about my first or second year owning McLean Insurance, paying off the business. And I walked into my dad's office and I had printed off an email, a complaint email. Uh, somebody had complained about the flyer I had sent or they had complained about the newsletter that I was sending every month or maybe they were complaining about the, the weekly emails that I was sending to my prospects and clients at the agency. But nonetheless, it was a complaint. And I printed off this complaint and I walked into my dad's office and he was busy with his head down working as usual. And I walked in, I said, you have a minute. So my dad puts down his, his pen and he looks up and he says to me, what, what's on your mind? And I said, well, I've got this complaint. I got this person who is complaining about uh, my new marketing. They don't uh, want to be on our list. They don't want us mailing them. Uh, they don't uh, like my personality marketing. Um, and uh, they want to be removed from the uh, from our list. They think it's unprofessional. They don't understand uh, why I'm marketing in this way. Uh, our marketing's ugly. It's uh, it's not what everybody else does, um, and it doesn't represent McLean Insurance in a good light. So, I uh, my dad looks at me and he. He says one thing that changed my entire mindset. He looks at me and he says, does this person pay your bills? I said, I'm not really certain if, if she or he pays the bills. He says, well, before you come in here and waste my time, let me know if this person spends money with us, gives us money and pays your bills is this person a client? So I go back and I go on the computer, I check and I see that this person has been a client off and on for the last 12 years. They've canceled their policy several times. They've been canceled a handful of times for non-payment of premium. The file is thick. Uh, they've, uh, we, it's a, it's a monoline policy. All we have is the car. We don't have the property. We don't have the umbrella. And I used to list my accounts, platinum, gold, and silver, according to the quality of the client. And it's a silver account. It's the, uh, it's the bottom 80% of accounts. So I walk back into my dad's office and I say, well, She's, uh, she's not a client right now. She has been a client in the past, and this is why she's on our, our mailing list and our email list. So my dad looks at me and he says, so she doesn't give you money. She doesn't, she doesn't do business with you consistently, and she doesn't pay the bills around here. He, so he says, what in the fuck are we talking about? And I was stunned I was like well you know the customer's always right and my dad looked at me and he said like fuck the customer is always right he said first of all she's not a customer second of all when she is a customer she's not a profitable customer and he said by looking at the thickness of this file she's a pain in the ass when she is a customer so she's unprofitable and the staff, she treats the staff poorly. So he says, why are we spending time and energy discussing someone who doesn't bring us money, who doesn't pay the bills and doesn't have any skin in the game? He goes, remove her from the list. Don't ever mail her again. Don't ask her to do business again. She's dead to you. Curate, cut the rope swift sword so that story has always resonated with me 
how important immunity to criticism is. I think that thin skin, I think thin skin is one of the greatest handicaps in business and life. After 31 years in the entrepreneurial trenches, everything from lemonade stands to tennis camps, to window washing companies, to insurance agencies, to running barber shops, even coaching and consulting. Thin skin is the greatest handicap that I've seen in business and also in a person's personal life. When you are distracted by the unqualified, unqualified opinions of people who are not customers, not clients, not high level buyers, not high level prospects, people that are unqualified in marketing, in advertising, in sales, even unqualified in business. You'll have your sister-in-law give you marriage advice or your brother will give you some marketing advice or your fat, your fat sister-in-law will give you some nutrition or fitness advice. Unqualified advice. And I just think that thin skin, being affected mentally, expanding and expanding your energy and time on unqualified criticism, letting it bother you, is one of the greatest weaknesses in life and business. That said, I think thick skin, the ability to not care about the opinions that do not matter, is one of the most powerful, powerful advantages you can have as a husband, as a father, as a businessman, as a community leader. There's been many people who have said there's no success without controversy. I had a, a man that I worked for by the name of Dan Hurley. I coached his junior A team when I was in university. One of the toughest men I ever worked for. Nickel miner dug nickel out of the uh, the ground every day and he was a badass entrepreneur blue collar slash white collar and he used to say to me michael there is no success without controversy at the time i was 21 22 years old in university coaching for him full time and I sometimes used to be concerned about what was written in the newspaper in the sports section about our team. We're expected to win. When we were winning, we should have won by more. When we lost, which was rarely, it was time to fire the coach or make a change or trade half the team. And we were a criticism on television at the time. Uh, criticism on good morning radio um, and Dan used to Mr. Hurley used to say Michael there is no no success without controversy and he used to tell me he would say you know we're trying to do something special here we're trying to win a centennial cup national championship here with this team and he said You've got to have thick skin and you've got to be immune to unqualified criticism. A member he said to me a few times, he said, Michael, the day you start listening to the fans, the day as a coach you start listening to the fans in the seats, you'll soon be sitting with them. So he trained me to refocus on the important like he said, you have video to watch, you have practices to run, you have weight training sessions to organize, you have players to inspire, you have student athletes to motivate and lead. He said, you don't have one ounce of time or energy to focus on criticism, unqualified critics, any of that negativity. And you see the great coaches 
in sport today and they literally don't participate in the news. Uh, they don't participate in toxic sports like ESPN. Uh, they don't participate in any anti-social media. You see Nick Saban's daily press conferences at Alabama and he stands up at the podium. And the only thing that Nick Saban does is he passes on a message through the media that he wants his players to hear. So there's all kinds of ridiculous questions. He always looks irritated because he is. He always looks pissed off because he is. He always looks frustrated because he is. And he stands at that wooden wooden podium with the with the bottle of Coca-Cola there as the sponsor. And sometimes he just goes ballistic. And the media eats it up. It ends up on Twitter, it ends up on Instagram and all this other stuff. But it's because he's so passionate about coaching. But if you'll notice, the message is always for the players. It's always for the team. He'll talk about the opponent, about not underestimating the opponent. He'll talk about losses in the past because they weren't mentally ready to play. He talks about rat poison, social media, people, toxic people, the news, people around you patting you on the back, telling you you're better than you are. Rat poison. That's a message to his players. That's a message to his coaches. That's a message to his athletic trainers. And he constantly says, uh, I don't care what any of you guys think in terms of the media. Talking to the people in that room, he's like, I don't care what you think, so none of this affects me. You watch many of those press conferences, they're only a few minutes long. And he's like, I'm not affected by rat poison, outside um, influences, fans, boosters, corporate supporters, um, you know, and you name it, anything, on online, offline. He's like, I just focus on the job that I need to do. And he literally tells them to their faces, I don't care what you think. So he's got, you know, almost 50 years of coaching. And I think Saban understands that the day he starts listening to the fans, the boosters, the supporters, um, the media is the day that he'll soon be sitting with them. So he doesn't participate in any of that rat poison where you're getting unqualified criticism. Media guys, they wouldn't, they have never, you throw them a football, it would hit them in the face. You know, they couldn't hit a golf ball 25 feet, but they write about Rory McIlroy. They, uh, they, can't, they can't skate, but they, they write about hockey. They've never tossed a football in their life, but they talk, they write about college football and coaching. So unqualified criticism. I love how everybody in this world, especially the 99% ordinary and average, the cheap seats people, everybody's a marketing expert, right? When I switch to our golden, riot, raw, raw, uh, golden rod colored flyers, save 37% on your home and car insurance instantly. And I sent these out 500 a month then a thousand a month. And you know, about 10 years later, 400, uh, 140,000 a month, 140,000 flyers a month. I sent out 9,000 paper newsletters a month. I was on television walking on the side of the freeway. I was on radio. I was in your mailbox every single month, killing lots of trees. And it's amazing, everybody is a marketing expert. They haven't read a book on marketing. They've never studied direct re uh, response marketing. They've never studied the great marketing wizards of our time. They've never ever gone to a marketing seminar. They've never studied the great marketing legends. They uh, all just on and on. But everybody and anybody is a marketing expert, pretend expert, right? 
Michael, I don't, I don't like the color of that flyer. Or there's too much text and copy on here. Nobody would read this. This is so ugly and unprofessional. And luckily I have enough experience. I've been studying direct response marketing for 30 plus years that I have, those are the responses I'm looking for from the unqualified. That's exactly the feedback I'm looking back from, from people I want them to. And those again are what my dad always said. He always said, good morning. He always calls those people non-buyers, pretend experts. So, you know, you're always, if you do anything, if you're gonna chase a championship in any area of your life, there's gonna be lots of criticism. There's gonna be lots of unqualified criticism. And man, oh man, you gotta have and develop immunity to criticism, unqualified criticism. There is no greater handicap in life or in business than having thin skin. When I was coaching hockey and pro and amateur, I remember they would say a player has rabbit ears. So this would be a highly talented player, but they weren't a championship level player because they had rabbit ears. And what rabbit ears mean, if you, if you watch a hockey game, you don't see it from the seats. But the chirping and the trash talking like any other sport that goes on is insane. Players talking to players. And it's hardcore, it's hardcore. And the referees can hear it, the coaches, I can hear it on the bench. And it's just amazing because it's mental warfare. It literally is mental warfare. So you have two types of players. You have mentally tough players winners, champions, thick skin. And then you have the loser player, no matter how talented he or she is, who has the rabbit ears, you say something to them and there they become emotionally drunk. In other words, they're as drunk from emotion as they would from any drug or drink, emotional drunkenness. So they can be the best player in the world but if a player skates up to them on the other team or walks up to them or says something, you know, they're done. They're emotionally drunk. They can make a comment about how soft they are or they can make a comment about when they lost an important game. They can make a comment about their sister. Doesn't really make any difference. You're either mentally tough and you're immune to unqualified criticism or you have thin skin and you end up emotionally drunk. And you can't win with emotionally drunk players. You can't win with emotionally drunk employees. And you can't win if you're personally emotionally drunk. If you have thin skin, you're just constantly gonna be focusing on things that do not matter. Things that do not matter at all. So, uh, I'll never forget that story as long as I live. What are we talking about here? Does this critic pay the bills? Now, you'll say, you know, what if a top person, you know, a qualified person it criticizes? Well, of course, if they have skin in the game, like if, I, if I'm writing copy and it's, and somebody who's one of my top champions or a John Carlton, or a Dan Kennedy, or a Doberman Dan says, you know, Michael, that's, that copy is, is not strong enough, it's weak, or I don't agree with that headline, or I think your call to action needs work. Well, that's qualified criticism. That's the kind of stuff you wanna take in and consider because they're proven winners in that area. They're qualified, they have you know, 20,000 hours of mastery in copywriting. You know, if Bill Belichick, you know, tells you how to, to read, you know, your, your first two reads, um, you know, if you're a quarterback, well, you know, you're gonna listen to a guy like Belichick if he criticizes your game because he's Bill Belichick. You know, it's, a, it's the same with somebody who's built up a company 
to seven, eight figures and sold it, you know, for, for 10 million, 20 million, 100 million, and they make a comment of how to sell your business, well, that's qualified criticism. You know, I listened to my dad throughout my business career because my father is a proven winner in multiple businesses in all kinds of different industries. So I always say, I don't listen to anybody that I wouldn't trade places with. When it comes to marketing, I don't listen to anybody in marketing that I wouldn't trade places with. In other words, if they're not making eight figures a year, if they're not writing every day, if they're not producing newsletters, if they're not top 1% direct response writers and copywriters and advertisers, then I'm not interested because I wouldn't trade places. I wouldn't have them do my marketing. I'll listen, you know, this is why I hired Doberman Dan because he's a top 1% copywriter. The same applies to anything. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna, when it comes to marriage or it comes to raising kids, I'm not gonna listen to any so-called expert unless I would trade, good morning, I wouldn't, uh, unless I would trade places with that person. In other words, what's their marriage look like? What's that track record look like? What are their, what are their kids? What are, show me their kids. How are they as teenagers? How are they as young adults? Would I trade places with them? Same with fitness and health. You know, the fat smoking doctor or, you know, the, the consultant who's never won anything. I'm just like, what business did you build? Well, I didn't build any business. I'm like, what product do you sell? Well, I sell this product and how to build businesses. I'm like, what, what product did you market from scratch to $8 million in net worth? Well, nothing. Haven't run a lemonade stand, pretend experts. So that's unqualified criticism. If you won't, you know, even with me, I'm a consultant. If you wouldn't trade places with me in, you know, as far as world building, like I, I don't teach meditation. I don't teach mindfulness like my wife. I don't teach yoga. I don't teach, you know, how to hit a hundred mile an hour baseball. I don't teach any of those things. I don't teach mathematics. I don't teach history. I don't teach geography. I teach world building because I built a world of my own personal world built on, on significance, not just success. And I built an amazing world um, where I have, I'm in a financial safe harbor position. I do what I want, when I want, with whom I want, at the cost I want on the terms I want, I've built a life that I don't need to escape or vacation from, and it's taken a long time. But I have a proven track record, a proven track record as a world builder and as a coach. So if I don't have that proven track record, then I don't believe that anybody should listen to me. So I people say, Michael, what do you do for a living now? I say, oh, I'm a world building supremacist or I tell them I'm a world building extremist and that just stops them dead in their tracks, right? They don't know what, what the hell that is. I try not to explain it to them after that, but um, it's interesting. Don't ever listen to anybody, myself included, that you wouldn't trade places with when it comes, good morning, to a specific area in your life. You know, don't fall for the fat, dos, fat smoking doctor syndrome. Don't listen to a, a politician who's never run a lemonade stand. We have, uh, I'd call Miss Justine Trudeau, the pretend leader, Prime Minister of Canada. People ask me about Justine all the time. And I said, well, I said, you have a man running a country who has never ever run a lemonade stand, never run a tennis camp, never run a one-person operation, never invented anything, never founded anything, never been in a position as a CEO, never been in a leadership position. He was a part-time drama teacher for a few months. He, uh, he was born entitled with a silver spoon in his mouth. That's not his fault. Never worked a day in his life, ever. And now he's in the most powerful chair in the country of Canada. He sits around with other world leaders. 
That's why Trump had no time for Justine. He had no time. He, you know, he looked at him as a spoiled child. You know, he didn't say it. He didn't come out and say it, but he said, useless, useless. No, thanks. Would you like to come and vi visit Canada? No, thanks. Would you like to sit down? Would you like me to? No, thanks. And even when Justine, uh, Miss Trudeau, uh, came to America, Trump would just give him the minimum time. He was like, I'm sorry, but I need to deal with China. I need to deal with, you know, serious, serious countries, serious enemies, serious adversaries, serious people. He's simply not a serious person and there's nothing there. That's a reflection on the voting population, by the way. He promises handouts and people vote. He promises magic buttons and people vote. He, he, he promises easy shortcuts, people vote. He, uh, they sacrifice their freedom for dependence, right? Dependent on the government. So same thing now in the States, you know, you have creepy Joe in the most powerful seat in the, in the free, in the free world at least. And you have a guy there that, I mean, a career politician, it's elder abuse. It's elder abuse. You know, the people that have propped him up and elected and put him in that, in that seat. I have compassion for the man because he, he has no idea what's even going on. They prop him up, they send him out there, they try to get him to, to read a teleprompter. He's not capable of that. And that's a man in the most powerful office in the world. Once again, a reflection on the voter base, the corruption in voting, the whole nine yards. So I don't know how I got onto that topic, but I'm really glad I did because uh, these videos are sometimes about nothing like the Seinfeld show. Michael's walking and talking videos about nothing. I went from my dad telling me to get the fuck out of my office and quit crying like a little whiny bitch about a critic to talking about Justine Miss Trudeau to talking about Creepy Joe. And somehow every time I get an opportunity, I always get Donald J. Trump in there. Man, I could be talking about a hockey four check I could be talking about, good morning. I could be talking about, uh, it doesn't matter, but the, and I'd get Trump in there somehow. So um, anyway, thin, talk about thick skin, right? Attacked from every side, regardless of what you think. Just attacked from every side by the, the mainstream media. Just attacked, right? Attacked and just keeps coming just keeps coming doesn't give a shit what anybody unqualified says says so I'll just say if you have thin skin it's gonna cripple you as an entrepreneur it's gonna cripple you as a marketer maybe the reason you haven't been able to sit down and write and work on your marketing every day for 30 minutes which you've been trying or 60 minutes is because in the back of your mind, you feel that you'll be criticized. You feel that people will criticize your marketing. It's ugly, it's unprofessional. Nobody's going to respond to this. You're gonna upset some people. So if you have that mindset, that's where the crippling behavior comes in. That's the reason you can't sit down and write. It's not that you can't sit down and write. You get up and walk, you get up and read. But I have men say to me all the time, Michael, I just, Operation Money Suck. That's the one thing I haven't been able to do. I haven't been able to set my kitchen timer and, and write for 30 minutes a day or, or write for uh, one hour a day. Good morning. And uh, I'm like, you know what? That's something right here. That's a mental block. That's not, that's not lack of discipline or not even an environmental problem. The problem is, you have thin skin and you are, you're not immune to criticism. You're worried about what the unqualified person is gonna think. You're, you're worried about what your aunt's gonna think, your wife's gonna think. You're worried about what your sister's gonna think. People in the, oh my God, what would people in the community think if I hit it big? 
or if I sent out that letter or that FedEx package, what would people think? Would I be criticized? So you better get past all of that, what I call mental trash. It's uh, good morning. That, uh, that mental trash and that, that thin skin is absolutely crippling you. You're never gonna build the world of your dreams if you care what people in the cheap seats say. Like you're never gonna curate toxic people if you're worried about, oh my God, what will they think if I spend less time with them? What will they think if I lose 30 pounds? What will they think if I change my friends? What will they think if I start making more money? What will they think if I transform in front of them? Well, I'll tell you right now that uh, the winners will love it and the losers will hate it. So you better get okay and get rid of that mental trash. Like Nick Saban says, ordinary people cannot stand exceptional people and exceptional people cannot stand mediocre people. Remember Saban said that, he said, you know, winners can't stand mediocre people and mediocre people can't stand winners. So you can't have it both ways. The critics are always gonna be there if you're doing and accomplishing anything worthwhile. What I did is I, so I, when I had thinner skin, I surrounded myself with more winners. I surrounded myself with more powerful people, uh, more champions, more lions. I surrounded myself, I read books about winners and champions and leaders and the battles they went through with critics and haters and how they used it as fuel to drive them forward and that was very helpful. And then at the end of the day, I took my dad's advice and I said, before, you know, if I get an email or a, a nasty, you know, critic or somebody wants to be, you know, taken off my mailing list, I'll say to them, I'll say, I'll say to myself, the discipline, does this person pay the bills? Does, is this person more successful than I am in this area? And if they're not, then I just completely look the other way. I just, it's dead to me. Another thing a mentor told me one time, which has served me well, he said, Michael, remember all criticism and hate comes from beneath. All criticism and hate will come from beneath. So when you see somebody trashing your business on Facebook or twits and Twitters and Instagram or any of this stuff, sending a re reply guy, sending a, a reply to an email that's, that you sent by an autoresponder, not the sharpest knife in the drawer, as my daughter Emery says, those, that's, that's hate from beneath. That's critic criticism from beneath. So my mentor said to me at the time, he said, Michael, all criticism and hate will come from beneath. Those hockey fans that were critics, criticized me, uh, any you know prospects, old clients, it was all came from beneath. It wasn't people that were doing well. It wasn't winners, it was losers. It wasn't people that I respected. And when I, like I said, when criticism comes from somebody above me in that area, somebody who's fitter, somebody who has a better marriage, somebody who's a better marketer, somebody who's wealthier, somebody who has more personal sovereignty, then I'm all ears. But if they, if they don't hate, if they don't have a proven track record and they don't, they don't bring me money, if they don't pay the bills, I pay them no mind. My God, we're not in high school anymore, as my dad says. That's what he said to me when I was leaving the office that day. He goes, cut that shit out. He said, you, you sound like a little high school bitch. He says, coming in here with your little printed off email of somebody you don't even know who doesn't give us money, who, who abuses the staff, and you're giving it your mental energy and your physical time. He's like, that's high school, that's high school. That's high school mentality. Be a king and run this business. He said, you're gonna run a $17 million business. He's like, who? You know, you, you just like, get that shit out of my office, okay? If one of our platinum clients comes in bitching and complaining about something, maybe we'll talk about it, maybe. So, very interesting puns. Nothing is more powerful in your life than thick skin and mental toughness. 
and nothing is more weakening, more needy, and more, it, it repels wealth. It repels um, success when we have thin skin. One makes you magnetic, thick skin makes you magnetic. Thin skin mean, makes you radioactive and toxic to success. It repels wealth and success. Being Having thin skin and being needy, there's nothing worse in your relationships, your marriage, your connection with your children, your marketing, your employees. One is magnetic and the other is radioactive. It makes you radioactive. It makes you toxic. So make sure you're working every day on making that, that skin thicker and only listening to the high, super qualified people that are, that are already where you want to go. If you wouldn't trade places with them, to pay them no mind. If you need some help, you can grab a copy of my book below, How to Not Get Your Ass Kicked in Business and Life. Go to nobullbook.com. That's nobullbook.com. It's a real book. And if you want to uh, more information, join my paper and ink tree killing mission and subscribe to my monthly Michael McLean world building newsletter. I ship you a 22 page newsletter every month to your home or business. No, uh, badassletter.com, badassletter.com. The link is below. And if you want to step up to the big leagues and hang out with elite men for the next 12 months and hang out with me for the next year, apply for my digital online mastermind. We meet every Wednesday for a couple of hours. Truly powerful to associate with men, elite men, husbands, fathers, grandfathers, entrepreneurs, community leaders. Uh, go to Badass World Builders with an S, badassworldbuilders.com and apply. I'll get back to you in a few days, see if we're a good fit. I'm probably not the perfect coach for you. Maybe this hard coaching isn't for you. If it is the right fit, we'll do it. If it's not, no worries either way. So that's it. Remember, number one handicap is thin skin. And I think one of the most powerful things is thick skin. It makes you magnetic. Magnetic to money, magnetic to your wife, magnetic to your children, magnetic to your prospects, magnetic to success. Amazing, amazing concept. Immunity to criticism. That's it. Two words that change my life and two words that can change your life. Be relentless.